Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the do while loop. Uh, the do while loop, uh, if you've been following along, is very similar to the while loop, except it's going to execute at least one time before it evaluates the condition that causes the uh, program to loop. So let's go ahead and get started with the do while loop. Okay, here I've created a very short program to demonstrate the do while loop. And uh, just like with the while loop, I'm, uh, I've created a variable that I'm calling count. And that could just as easily be some, some, uh, some kind of user input or some kind of uh, uh, sensor input coming from a, a, a lar much larger program. And, uh, and then the, on the next line, uh, I'm actually creating the, the do part of the do while loop. And they just use do. And in between the, the squiggly brackets here, I put the code. And, uh, and just like the the do the while loop, I'm just going to print uh, the value of count out on the screen. And but in this case, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add one to it here. And, and uh, I think I've shown you this before, but uh, you don't have to just do a regular variable. You can uh, do some math here and then insert that into the uh, string. So this is going, the first time this goes through there, it's going to be count, which is equal to zero plus one, it'll show one. And so th what this will do is it'll, uh, uh, and then it increments count, uh, and then it, then it evaluates whether it should loop again, uh, whether it should execute again. Uh, and at, right after the closing squiggly brackets, you put your while statement, and this works exactly the same as in the while loop here except it's at the end of the uh, end of the code that we're looping. And so in this case, we check to see if count is less than 10, then do it again. And, uh, and so what this is going to do is it's actually going to count to 10 for us. And then it'll exit and we print F. Now, uh, in this case, you do have to have this uh, semicolon after your while statement here. So just be aware of that. And let's go ahead and build and run and, and I'll, I'll show you how it works. And so there you go. Uh, it counts uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then out of the do while loop, just as we expected. Uh, now, let me show you uh, what happens. One of the useful things about this, let's just say that uh, our value is 10, and we'll build again and run it. You can see. Uh, it executes um, one time, and it says it's 11. Okay, well that's not that's not necessarily true, but uh, you can see that it 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 did execute the code within the loop, and then it exited the loop. So it did not loop back at all, but it did execute it once, even though. Uh, the condition in the while statement was false. So if you have a situation where you want that code to ex uh, execute at least one time before the condition is evaluated uh, that causes it to loop, then that is the case where you want to use the do while loop. And uh, just like with the, the, the while loop, you want to make sure that once it enters that, that that condition uh, has a case where it'll be false. Um, if you uh, if that condition is never false, uh, it uh, remember this will always this this program will always go into this code. And if this condition is is never false, so for example, if we leave this out, I won't run it. But if I left this out, this would run uh, forever. Um, actually, no, it wouldn't because it's set to ten. But if I had a zero there, for example, or a nine, uh, it would go into this code and it would loop forever. Uh, so just be aware of that, uh, that uh, you do have to set a condition so that it will exit out of that loop. Uh, but that's about it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, and we will talk again soon.